Hi folks, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Van Tech slash Chat Tuesday. So we're going to talk about something today, which is probably about the fourth most popular question I get asked all the time. And the question is, do I need to earth bond my 12 volt inverter in my camper van? So before I talk about this, what I want to actually talk about is some regulations um, to do with manufacturers uh, of motorhomes, camper vans and caravans. And they stipulate that earth bonding should take place to the chassis. They also state that you should install an RCD, a residual current detection device. So essentially, they think you're going to sit on a campsite. Uh, the rules and regulations are written primarily uh, without the understanding that there's an, an inverter, a local uh, power generation device in your vehicle. Therefore, their understanding and their guidelines, in my view, are um, incorrect and slightly misleading. RCDs primarily don't need an earth supply to work correctly, um, but a lot of them are. So as this question is about earth bonding and RCD, I'm going to try and cover them both. Now, what is earth? Well, earth really is earth. Um, essentially, the, um, the mains electricity circuits in your house have an earth cable that goes somewhere local to your house um, into a big copper rod that's put into the earth. So if you don't have an earth, a metal box chassis of the vehicle, um, should you therefore earth bond to the electrical chassis of the vehicle? Because it's already a negative electrical um, terminal in the electrical supply of your camper van. Um, oh, yeah, as the vehicle is concerned, the chassis is negative. So would you and should you dump 240 volts into the negative electrical circuit of your vehicle? Now, from a kind of electronics point of view, think about this. You've earth bonded to your chassis, which means that some of that electricity it's detected um, a fault on is going to get dumped to earth. And that means that your vehicle's not only got to deal with the electricity supply and um, you know systems that it's currently controlling, it's also now got to understand what the hell this big spike of different kind of electricity is doing as well. Which could mean in a world where most modern vehicles have got Campbell systems and ECUs and everything else, if you earth bond to your chassis of the vehicle, you could potentially blow up um, the very, very sensitive electronics in your vehicle, the ECU, all sorts of other stuff as well, by sending a spike of electricity um, through the chassis of your um, vehicle. Now, an ECU, for example, could be 700 to 2,000 pounds, um, and they can blow just like that. Therefore, um, my advice to people is do not earth bond your inverter to the chassis of your metal box vehicle. Um, and I want to back it up with a little bit of experience on this as well. The modern inverters... So Renergy, in my case, Victron, um, all the other major suppliers of high quality inverters have built in protection of that supply. Essentially, they're a local generator of electricity. Therefore, the onus is on them to make sure that that electricity is clean and um, that it's you know a good supply of electricity, but ultimately um, that it shouldn't leak faults anywhere. Uh, so it's going to be able to detect short circuits and overloads, um, including uh, an imbalance of electricity. Um, don't forget the RCD is to protect imbalances between live and neutral, um, and a local generator, as in you know, a, an inverter, is going to have that same technology built in there. So, if you're primarily always going to be off grid, and you want to install an inverter in your van. Um, hopefully you now understand don't earth bond the next part of that is should, should you install an rcd and you know if you're always going to be off grid there's no point putting an rcd um, into your electrical system either in my view because a decent quality inverter is already going to have that sort of safety level built into it now don't forget if you actually think oh no actually well i do go on site quite an awful lot though john so you know it'd be worthwhile having an rcd okay then if you've been to a campsite these days 
you will probably plug into a socket which connected to an RCD. A little trip switch to say on and off, they're amp rated, it's an RCD. So why put something in your van that you're going to be essentially connected to on the campsite or wherever you're connected to has got some sort of RCD protection already. So I think personally it's a bit of an overkill. Um, the fact that manufacturers are sticking to um, a standard of installation to always put RCD, um, you know, sort of um, consumer units in motorhomes out the factory, camper vans out the factory and caravans out the factory. Uh, that's predominantly because they expect them to go to campsites and plug in um, where there's an unknown quality of electricity, say, because you could take it to any part of the world. Um, so that's what they're doing. Uh, and the fact they're doing that, you know, I'm not going to argue with it. Um, it's potentially a life-saving device, so yeah. Um, should you put it in yours with your inverter, uh, that's entirely up to you. Yeah, they do have um, those safety features built into them and therefore if you want to further add your another safety feature on there, that's up to you. But if you want to keep your electrical um, system simple, like mine, then I haven't got one. It's that simple. Um, and like I say, with um, components, I also wanted to test out for this kind of uh, built-in protection, RCD, earthing bonding and all that kind of stuff in portable power stations. So um borrowed one off a friend, an EcoFlow, um, and I've obviously got the oil powers. And I checked to see if, if you plug them in on charge, because they've all got fallover protection, which means that if the main supply incoming to them drops out, they will instantly switch over to their battery uh, main supply. So I thought, okay then, so their mains charger is a three pin plug. Um, therefore, there's an earth coming in. Surely they distribute that earth to the three pin plugs on them. No, they don't. So um, yeah, power stations don't have earth bonded anything in them. Now, most of them are in a plastic case so that gets around that issue for one. Um, but also it also means that um, that they're not providing any kind of like earth protection in the, um, the safety feature that they've got as well. So much like what I was talking about with the inverters having um, very sensitive specialized protection built in, uh, the power stations do as well, which does mean, like I say, um, that if you wanna put a very simple electrical system in a vehicle, um like camper van motorhome whatever um then just buy a power pack just you know whatever you can afford power station um put that in and you can either do what i do used to do on the motorhome uh, which was just make a little tail out of your hookup socket to a three pin plug and plug it in that and that then basically turns everything in the motorhome onto 240. i did have to disable the charger but you can leave that enabled if you want the battery charger on as well uh, but it is by far the simplest and uh, most effective way of getting mains electricity into your camper van or motorhome uh, and caravan. And now we know as well that they are fully protected, that they've got all those um, systems built into them uh, and they're not earth bonded. And, um, and yeah, hopefully that might at least make sense to some people or answer some of your questions about the safety of um, inverters and these power packs and that kind of stuff and how well they protect you and I. Right so hopefully that's answered some of your questions and um, hopefully at least the do you need to earth bond and do we need an RCD is kind of answered anyway and if you've got anything else to ask please do ask in the comment section down below or if you've got your own advice or experience uh, leave that in the comment section down below as well you will notice that as you go and leave a comment that youtube now has uh, some prompts about um conductivity and what you should uh, provide in a comment and um, to be nice to people and you know to understand people's opinions and not push your own opinion to viciously towards what's going on on a on a on a chat or whatever um so yeah just bear that in mind that uh, youtube's picking up on the fact that sometimes it gets a bit heated in the comment section so uh, it's going to start kind of giving a bit of guidelines out there as well no bad thing in my view anyway right then i shall uh, catch you on the next video folks you take care see you later bye